Okay, well what we're doing today, we're doing a few interviews for uh, our uh, online classes. We're going to talk to some of our face-to-face -face students about their experiences and uh, why they decided to go criminal justice and uh, so, so here we are. So go ahead and identify yourself. Um, my name is Teddy Criswell. Um, I live here in Newcastle. I um, have for most of my life. Uh, I was actually, I was born in North Carolina and lived in Ohio for a brief time before uh, school and all that kind of stuff it was part of life, but born and raised pretty much in Indiana, but birth certificates from North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know how that goes. Well, I know you love the outdoors, is that right? Yes, I am an avid outdoorsman. I like to hunt, hunt in the winter and fish in the summer and uh, hunt with dogs a lot and that kind of stuff. So that's kind of what I do in my free time as far as that kind of stuff. And then also race go-karts. Oh, that's, so, yeah, and they've got that here. That's big yeah, in Newcastle. Yeah, so that's kind of something that's local here. I've never yeah. really done anything more with it. It's yeah. just kind of something I do on the side as far yeah. as that goes. Now, um, uh, what made you decide to go to college? <laughs> Actually, um, college was one of those things that Dad always said that that's what you're doing. He didn't do it. Uh, when my mom and Dad got married, they went to Florida on their honeymoon, and they never came back. So literally grandma and grandpa took them what little bit of stuff they had and dad never got, I mean he graduated, my mom and dad both are just high school graduates, neither one of them have a college degree um, and dad kind of always said that's the path you're taking so that's kind of, I'm not going to say he forced me into it but that's kind of what he told me and I just kind of grew into it and that's just the way it was. So. Any regrets about going to college? Um, I'm going to say no. I mean, as far as like reality of it, I, I don't know. I think the military might have been a good experience for me, but I think as far as my lifelong ambitions, I guess, I don't think that the military would have been the correct path for me to take. I'm, gl I'm glad. I think the military would have been fun for a short time, but I wouldn't yeah. have wanted to have stuck it out all my uh, buddies from school, from high school went to the military yeah. and I've seen seen where they're at and what they're going to do in the same time of what I've done. I feel like, not that I'm better than them, but I'm in a better situation in life as far as long term things because they're, they're get, I, I feel like they're getting out of school and they're starting where I started when I got out of high school. Yeah. I, I mean, I know I don't have the experience that they have, and I mean, that kind of stuff, but I feel like knowing what they're coming back to, I feel like I'm in a better position than where they're at. So that was a good choice for you then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not, yeah, I mean, I'm happy with what I've done as far as that goes, and I'm almost done with college, so I'm going to have to go an extra year and that kind of stuff. But, yeah. Uh, but you've worked the whole time. I've too. worked the whole time, and I don't have any student debt at all. Yeah. So, which is very unusual. Yeah. This so, day. and I'm gonna have, like I say, that's caused me since I don't have any student loans. I'm gonna have to go longer, but I don't have any student debt. So, yeah, it's so, kind of yeah. Your poison kind of thing. Well, let's talk a little bit about your uh, specific classes that you really liked. Are there some that you really felt like were really spoke to you, or um, ones that you enjoyed? I like. The court classes a lot. I don't. I want when I started. I wanted. I said I wanted to be a cop. But as I went along and found out, you know what, it's all about. I don't think that I want to be a cop. I think that's. I'm not saying it's not for me or anything like that. But I think as far as a career, I want to do something in courts and that kind of stuff more mm -hmm. so than on the street. When you say courts, are you thinking? Judge, or you think? Well, <laughs> no, I don't know that I would want to be a judge necessarily, and yeah. that's kind of where I'm at. I don't know what I want to do yeah. in the court, but I think that that is where I want to be. Yeah. Well, you know, like when I started out <clears throat> way back when, I was an intake probation officer for juvenile court. Yeah. And I was in court like almost every day. Yeah. So. And so what I did is. I announced all the cases and explained to the judge what the case was about and then that just got the ball started yeah. and everybody figured out what to do with it. And I really, that was a really good experience. I really enjoyed it. Um, the thing is though, you're not in court all the time. You know, I yeah. was in my office. In other words, you had to find out information to take to the courtroom. Yeah. 
in order to explain it to a judge. You didn't, just didn't make this stuff up or see it for the first time. In other words, you met with the people, you went over the papers, you knew exactly what you were getting into before you stepped in that courtroom. Yeah. You know, so it's about half and half. Yeah, and that's kind of, I don't, I guess I don't really know what there is to do that I would like to do in a court, yeah. so that's kind of, yeah. you know, what I, that's kind of where I stand. Yeah. On and that. you know, maybe some experience would be good as far as, and I know it's hard when you're working to get away, but if you could get some days where you could just go sit in court. Set, do a job of shadows. And that yeah, and talk to probation officers and talk to bailiffs and different people and stuff and and just see what might be, you know, something that you'd like to do in the courthouse. Yeah. So that'd be a good opportunity, I think. Yeah. And it, it, but you'd have to take time off work, well, probably, you know. You know, that's kind of, yeah, that's not so much a problem as much as, okay. you know. Well, hey, uh, classes that you struggled a little bit with, let's talk about um, that. My hardest class so far um, was criminal justice research methods. And um, I did manage to pass it with a C, which was what you know we needed to get out and to be real honest, I'm not I would say I learned more even though I struggled in it I learned more in that class than I have in any other individual class um, it wasn't real fun and I worried a lot about it but looking back on it now I would say that that is probably where I learned more information in, in a single class than any other class because I've had classes where I've gotten A's in them but when I, and as a matter of fact this happened when I was looking at my transcript trying to schedule classes a couple years ago I had an A down for a class but I couldn't even remember anything it, what it, I couldn't remember the teacher when I had it huh. or anything and I had just yeah. had it the previous semester Wow! Just but I got crazy. an A in it yeah. but I didn't learn anything yeah. in it so uh, that criminal justice research methods class was, it was very, very difficult for me. And I took it, I took it way earlier than I should have. Probably, yeah. Okay, and I think if I would have waited, yeah, I probably wouldn't have struggled so much with it. Yeah. But I took it because it fit in in the, in the time frame that I was right. worried about or wanting, yeah. you know, for my class schedule. So I thought, oh, I'll take it. Yeah, you know, and I think that was part of where yeah. my struggle. And that's was. really good advice. That's why we're making these videos, is because I think that research class you should take it almost at the end. Yeah, and I took it my it was my third semester. Yeah, I see took that's it. Tough. So, and she would talk about like the stuff that you talked about in your theories class. Yeah, you know, well, I hadn't had theories class. Exactly. I didn't. I didn't know anything about court. I mean, yeah. I'm taking like English, math, and oh, yeah. you know, writing. The yeah. first year, yeah. and I was just completely lost. Wow! As far yeah. as you know, what she was talking about, but now looking back on it, I mean, it's like yeah. it just you know handed it to you. Yeah. You know? So that that's a class that I've really struggled with, and another class that I don't know. It's I don't know if hard or it's a challenge more than anything is my Spanish class. Oh yeah. So I've taken. I'm in my third Spanish class. I'm going to get a Spanish minor as well. Yeah. And I took four years of Spanish in high school. Okay. So that helped, has helped me kind of fill the gap yeah. between, you know, because I, I know last year with Spanish, I would sit in class and think, I can't believe that some of these kids are in here and yeah. getting it because there's like, it's no way that I could have gotten it. Yeah. You know, not have it, if I had went in there cold turkey. And right, had yeah. Any no, no high school Spanish. Yeah, and because where I was, she was kind of, it was all in my head, but she was kind of tuning it up. And, yes, you know, yes. Getting it firing again. It was in there, but you just, just couldn't bring yeah, it to your tongue yeah. when you needed so, it. Yeah. And I know I was very, very happy that because uh, Dad made me take Spanish in high school. Yeah. And I didn't want to do it. But then by the time I got to the end, it turned into one of those, it's just it is what it is, and it's a pretty easy, yeah. you know, it clicks. So, yeah. Well, it's, it's right for some people. I know my sister's yeah. real good on languages, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, that'll be a tremendous skill that you could use in the courthouse. Yeah, so, and that's like... Because, I, I mean, if you're dealing with so many, uh, we get a lot of Hispanics now today, and there needs to be somebody that can at least, you know, relate to what yeah. they're trying to say. Now, what you're going to find out is, most likely, you've been taking Castilian Spanish, which is from Spain. Yeah. Whereas a lot of the people that you see, more parochial people that you see coming in from rural areas of Mexico, 
they have their own slang yeah, and stuff. Yeah, different. And, and it, it's a little bit just yeah. like Hoosierisms, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm stuck with it yeah. all my life, you know, so. Yeah. yeah, I've had people tell me that I've spoke to and stuff that I speak extremely pop, proper Spanish, yeah. you know, as because I don't know, because... I've, I'll, I'll teach something I've noticed in Spanish is all teachers, none of them will teach you slang because yeah. it changes so rapidly. Well, yeah. So you you speak, you know, proper, just like somebody that comes over yeah. here and speaks proper English, we kind of laugh at them. Well, yeah. that's what I do in Spanish. Yeah. But, but, you know, how do you teach somebody slang when it changes so yeah. rapidly and yeah. you're not in it? So. Well, hey, man, I tell you, I really appreciate you doing this with me today, and I think it's going to have value for other students and. Uh, any final comments or um, stick it out and don't quit? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's tough, I'm almost, but it's, I'm almost done. So yeah, it, that's what we it, like to hear. Yeah. All righty. Well, good. That'll be it then. Thanks.